Before J.J. Abrams brought life back into that old husk of a tauntaun known as Star Wars with The Force Awakens, and then it was naturally destroyed not long after, he did another film in the Star Universe, but this time Trek-related. I'm talking about 2009 Star Trek. What a weird slow roll to get there. Let's talk about it. Why now? You might be asking, Adam, why all these years later bring up this flick? Well, because I love movies. I love talking about movies, and I don't just jump on the trend or what's currently running on the algorithm, which is probably why my channel's not bigger than it should be. But I rewatched Star Trek just a couple days ago with my family for their first time. My daughter, my son, my wife, she's seen it, my kids haven't. They freaking loved this film. They're used to the MCU stuff and the DCU stuff and the blockbusters of today. It wasn't that long ago where there were practical sets. Of course, a lot of CG, but actual sets and time and energy and artistry put into big blockbuster flicks that weren't just solely created to drum up money, which obviously that, that is the number one goal, but there's other goals there. And J.J. Abrams absolutely nailed it with this first Star Trek film, one of three in the newer franchise. Fourth one is still supposedly in the works, uh, 10 years after the last one. I, I don't know what's happening. I do know this, 2009 Star Trek freaking holds up well. It's a great flick. I'm not gonna spoil anything is what I'm trying to say here. What's with all the slow roll commentary? What I'm just doing here is giving you a public service announcement. This movie's older now. It's crazy to think, it's, it's not a fresh little hatchling. It's, it's, it's been around the block, it's got two other sequels, and a lot of people haven't seen this. So this is a public service announcement to tell you to give it a chance. Pop it in. You will be pleasantly surprised, I think, as long as you're not one of those, you know, like, smells his own farts Star Trek fans that only believes that Leonard Nimoy should be Spock and, and William Shatner should be Captain James Kirk. Okay, I, I mean, L Leonard Nimoy's in this movie. We have the old Spock in here. We also have Chris Pine as the reckless, young Captain Kirk. We also have Christian Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth, he often goes by. I say Christian because why not? He's got a little cameo in this. We got Zoe Saldana. We got a couple people from the MCU. I mean, at this point, it's so bloated. Who's not, you know? Simon Pegg. What else do you have to say? What else can you say about him? He's, he's a treasure. Zachary Quinto. Carl Urban. You may know him from The Boys as of late. John Chow, Winona Ryder, the kids will know her from Stranger Things and nothing else. And Anton Yelchin, I think that's how you say the name, I'm not sure. I believe that actor sadly died a few years back, which is such a sad thing to hear because he was really good as Chekhov. This whole cast is great. I just watched this movie and to summarize the plot would be insane for me to do. It's got time travel in it. It's got Eric Bana pissed as the villain. His whole planet has been destroyed. He sucked through a black hole with his crew on their futuristic ship that can drill into planets and destroy them. He's out for revenge against the Enterprise, against the entire Galactic Federacy for what happened. He blames them foolishly, ignorantly, and mainly he blames Spock, a man who said he could take care of it. He could fix the problems they were facing. Well, he was too late and his wife and child and whole planet and civilization's gone because of that mistake. I'm not gonna go much deeper into the plot because it involves time travel, which can be very sticky. I, I also don't wanna spoil anything because like I said, I want people, newcomers that haven't seen this to go out and watch. Go out, by go out, I mean rent it at your house. Go out of your rooms and into the family room and watch. Unless you have a nice TV in your bedroom. Again, we're just, we're just rambling here today, aren't we? Production wise, let's get into it. Looks gorgeous. Whole movie from top to bottom. Now there is a lens flare issue. For some reason, J.J. Abrams had a had a bizarre part of his life where he thought, this could use more lens flare. It's like the SNL skit, except for more cowbell, it's more lens flare. And that's what he brings to the table constantly. It's not as overpowering as I originally remember it. The first time I watched, I thought, oh my God, can we calm down? There's like lens flares slitting people's throats, lens flares left and right. There's baby lens flares birthing out of original parent lens flares. It's lens flareception. It's not near that bad. Could they have calmed down on it? Absolutely, though. The movie's got action. It's got intrigue. 
It's got some sexiness to it. We got a lot of young, good-looking people here. Got a lot of hot bodies. Got a lot of hot minds. There's some sharp, sophisticated dialogue. It's witty. It's funny banter. And if you have a phaser of your own, you're gonna wanna set that to fun. Because this movie is fun from top to bottom. It's two hours and nine minutes. It flies by like it's an hour 45, hour and a half. You, you will want it to be longer. And that's how good movies operate. You want more. Leave them wanting more. And thankfully you get more with the sequels. Now, I don't think they're as good as the original 2009 version here. The original. Star Trek's been going for like decades. I mean, come on. But th this newer run. The two sequels, not as good, but still solid additions. Still a great trilogy, one that I hope they do continue on with. I don't want to make this longer than it should be outside of these weird, bizarre little tangents I went on. I just wanted to let you know, 2009 Star Trek holds up. Give it a chance. I know people have been really upset with a lot of stuff in Star Trek lately. So just go back. It wasn't that long ago where there was some pride in the franchise. Did it work for everyone? Of course not. But I think for the majority, they didn't just knock this one out of the park. They knocked it out of the galaxy. All right, there's my public service announcement. Star Trek, check it out. I didn't get paid for this review, although I wish J.J. Abrams would, would pull up to the house with a truckload of money. Some of the leftovers he had from shitting out that last Star Wars movie. And uh, yeah, I would gladly accept it. Let me know if you've seen the film, if you like it, if you hate it, why I'm wrong, why I'm absolutely right. More people should check this gem out. Like this video if you had a good time, and please subscribe if you haven't. I post movie content each and every week. Love to have you stick around. And I guess I'll just leave you with a classic, May the Force Be With You. That's not right.